This is ABC 15 Mornings. Seeking asylum. Those who deserve protection from persecution get that protection. Those who don't are promptly sent back. Are we about to see a migration surge at the border? Looking to remodel. Probably be about a year before you get it. Why you might want to hold off on that home improvement project for now. Happening to date, a vote to advance the Supreme Court nomination. It's all about playing catch and throwing strikes. Are you ready for opening day? And it's a dry heat. Things are going to be warming up this week. Oh, that's always what we say. It's a, it's dry, a dry heat, heat around right? here. I have a T-shirt that says that. Yes. It's a dry heat. Uh huh. Did they give that? Did somebody give that to you when they knew you were moving to Arizona? No, I bought it. Okay. I yeah. bought it to sport around because that's always what we say. It's a dry so heat true. as you sweat through the yeah. shirt. Yes. Right? Yeah. We cool things off. <laughs> Good morning to you. Thank you for joining uh, us for your Monday to kick off the work week. We appreciate it. I'm Keely O'Kelly. And I'm Justin Pizzera in for Nick Saletti. Allison is here. She is in for Iris. And you're bringing us some news about, you know, the dry heat. <laughs> the heat coming our way. I the know, heat. it's a dry heat. When I explain that to someone for the first time as we get to check out your most accurate forecast, uh, I realized I'd become a full-on Arizona. Yes. And I really was defending our weather. I said, but it's a dry <laughs> heat. And when I said it, I'm like, whoa. I'm from here for sure now, right? 64 degrees is where we're sitting at Phoenix Sky Harbor. Not too bad out there. So if you're going to be heading out soon, no worries. We do look to stay dry out there. Winds fairly light this morning, but they will start to kick up as we get into the afternoon. So just a heads up, we are in for a bit of a breezy day as we look ahead to the uh, afternoon and into the evening as well. Your Valley Activity Planner looks good. You got the green light for me, whether you're going running, hiking, biking, a leisurely walk. That's usually my more my speed there. Um, but you want to get out and enjoy. Today is still going to be an above average day as far as those temperatures are concerned. And thankfully, we're nowhere near that record high. But we are going to be getting close to temperatures like this as we track a warm up coming our way. So I'm going to go over that in the full most accurate forecast a little bit later on. But for now, I want to bring in my friend Noelani Graf, who is keeping a track of those roads for us this morning. And things look pretty good behind you now. Yeah, they do. This is what we want to see on a Monday. And I want to say when people say to me it's a dry heat, I tell them so is a jet engine. OK, remember. <laughs> that <laughs> <The> truth <laughs> live view this morning uh, of Tempe Town Lake. This is the 202 Santan at Center Parkway. Things look great there. There was actually a higher traffic volume minutes ago, but it's thinned out and otherwise the rest of our valley roads are not too shabby either. The 10 coming in from the West Valley. You're just going to start pumping those brakes right around 54th Avenue this morning. You'll go as slow as 40 miles an hour, but really not bad. Also coming down the 17, you might slow down a little bit as you get closer to Camelback in those southbound directions. But again, it's not bad. You'll get through to the stack just fine. Northern Valley cities, if you're coming in from Surprise or Peoria this morning on the 60, things look great. And the 101 across the North Valley. East Valley, both of the 202s uh, coming through Mesa, Gilbert, and Chandler look good. The 60 is clear. The 202 South Mountain is good. And for our friends coming in from Maricopa, same thing. You're going to cruise right on through to the 10 this hour. So new this morning, just minutes ago, we learned that Arizona Attorney General Mark Burnovich is going to sue over Title 42. This is a very controversial topic. He's joining a few other attorneys general to file that lawsuit. Now, Title 42 is a public health order focused on the border, but it is set to be lifted next month. And our Jamie Warren is live this morning talking about this and why the border, with so many other things happening, has really not been front and center. Uh, well, it hasn't, Kaylee, but, you know, with COVID cases starting to wind down here, even in Arizona, also the midterm elections coming up, this is going to be a topic that we are going to be hearing more about in the coming months. And starting next month, that is when Title 42 is set to expire here. The public health order went into effect back in March of 20, uh, back in March of 2020, excuse me. It allows the U.S. Department of Homeland Security to expel migrants at the border due to health concerns related to COVID-19. Title 42 has gotten more scrutiny recently with Ukrainians coming to the border looking for asylum. Critics say that once the measure does get lifted, they expect a surge in border crossings. The chief of staff for the White House spoke to ABC News this weekend about the upcoming move. Title 42 isn't an immigration law, it's a public health law. It says you can exclude people uh, who pose a public health risk. The Centers for Disease Control decide uh, how to apply that, and they've decided that sometime in late May, the pandemic will be a place where we can no longer exclude people on a public health rationale. Look, we need to do more work at the border. 
Arizona Senators Kirsten Sinema and Mark Kelly have warned that it may be too early to end this restriction. They wrote a letter to the White House asking for a specific plan in place to secure this process at the border before doing anything. Title 42 is set to expire in 49 days and we will be learning more about what this process will look like exactly in the coming weeks. Reporting live in Phoenix, Jamie Warren, ABC 15, Arizona. New details this morning after an Arizona fugitive was killed during a shootout in Oklahoma Saturday. According to authorities, when they spotted the armed robbery suspect, he started firing at them. The interstate was quickly shut down. When he finally got out of that car, officials say that he continued to shoot at troopers as he tried to escape. He was shot and killed. No one else was hurt. One man was shot last night in Tempe near Priestin Baseline. Police believe it believe that it started as a fight between two men who knew each other. The man who was shot is expected to be OK. No word on whether any arrests have been made. Phoenix police need your help, and this is after a 21 year old man was shot and killed early Saturday morning. We're told Zion Parker was killed near 35th Avenue and Greenway. Anyone with any information about this case is urged to call police. Well, legendary trainer and University of Arizona graduate Bob Baffert's 90 day suspension from horse racing gets underway today. Now, all of this stems from medication violations involving some of his horses, including last year's Kentucky Derby winner. He did appeal that suspension, but it was denied. Another Republican is joining the race for Maricopa County attorney. Prosecutor Rachel Mitchell has qualified on the ballot alongside fellow Republican Gina Godbear. Alistair Dell resigned from that position last month. Mitchell gained national attention a few years ago when she was brought in to question Brett Kavanaugh during his Supreme Court confirmation hearing. Candidates have until today to get enough signatures to be on the ballot. The special election to determine who will serve the final two years of Adele's term will be held along with the state's midterm elections. Boy, it could be another really rough day for air travel. This year, it's Flight Aware's misery map. And so far this morning, just taking a look at this, we've seen 341 delays. It's pretty early in the morning for this. And 151 cancellations and you can see it's a really tough day when you take a look at Miami right also New York City Wow some major delays there and we've even seen some delays uh, out in the West here Denver and a few at Sky Harbor more than 10,000 flights were delayed or canceled over the weekend a few hundred affected at Sky Harbor maybe you're waking up going yep yep I was caught up in that Southwest Airlines hit the hardest dealing with a planned system outage. Uh, I flew out of Vegas early yesterday morning. You guys, the line just to check baggage was more than an Ooh. hour, and that was at eight o'clock in the morning. So the airline is allowing customers to rebook flights. They have 14 days to choose a new flight, but can only travel from and to their original chosen cities. Passengers can also travel standby. Congress is running out of time to provide more federal funding to combat COVID. So starting tomorrow, the federal program which reimburses healthcare companies for vaccinating people without insurance will stop taking new claims. Last week, they stopped reimbursing for tests and treatments, which forced Embry Health to shut down dozens of its testing sites here in Arizona. But vaccination should still be free since the federal government pre-purchased all of those vaccines. Leaders in the Senate say that they are closing in on a deal to approve $10 billion in new COVID funds. The Senate could consider the legislation as soon as this week. However, Congress's two-week recess starts next Monday. Arizona parents can now be paid caretakers. A new program allows parents and guardians of medically fragile children to become licensed health aides. They need to be trained to get certified first and then they can be hired by a home care agency and then get paid to provide care that they've already been giving to their children. The goal is to provide families with kids who need round the clock care, flexibility and support. Well, one Arizona family traveling more than 200 miles so their baby could get the best possible treatment at Phoenix Children's. This is after little Tiago was diagnosed with cancer. His mom started noticing things were a little off, she says, including what she calls a strange glow in his eyes that reflected certain light. Well, thankfully, his aunt is a nurse, so she immediately recognized it could be something more serious, and it was a type of eye cancer. Get emotional thinking about it because I mean I had just had him and now they were telling me he had cancer like it was really hard. 
Some of that, though, is their tears of joy because after several rounds of treatment, the cancer became inactive. And now, a year and a half later, you can see Tiago is doing amazing. After his mom shared his story on social media, another family was able to identify something was wrong and their son was able to get treatment as well. The main symptoms of retinoblastoma are eyes that appear to be crossed and a white color in the center of the circle of the eye when light is shown in the eye. Like, kind of like when someone takes a picture, right? It's not necessarily red eye, it's white. You can take action to help kids just like Tiago. With our ABC 15 telethon benefiting Phoenix Children's, it is happening Wednesday, April 13th. Our phone lines are going to be open from 6 a.m. until 1035 that night, and all of the money raised goes to help children who need it most. Well, apparently we just don't have enough videos on Snapchat. Up next, ABC 15 mornings. Yep, you can now use the app to share YouTube videos. I'm John Matteris. More and more complaints of long delays in getting kitchen appliances, more delays in getting parts to fix them. We have a warning to anyone planning some home improvement this year coming up. And it's already one of the biggest sports complexes in the entire state this morning. Another addition to Bell Bank Bark and Mixa. This is exciting, and so is this. Two days left of spring training, then it's time to play ball for real. Our Arizona Diamondbacks announcing their starting pitcher for the season opener on Thursday. Live look at our ADOT camera in the West Valley as you approach downtown Phoenix. There's a lot of cars out there, and at times they're crawling. I'll show you those desert drive times coming up in your full traffic report. Thank you for starting your day with ABC 15 Mornings. In this morning's headline, Supreme Court nominee Ketanji Brown Jackson is expected to be one step closer to confirmation today. The Senate Judiciary Committee will vote to send her nomination to the Senate floor. It would set up a final vote as soon as tomorrow, though it is more likely the vote will be held later in the week. Today, jury selection starts in the deadliest mass shooting ever to go to trial. Nicholas Cruz pleaded guilty last year to killing 17 students and staff members at a high school in Parkland, Florida. That was in 2018. A jury will now determine if he will be sentenced to death or life without parole. Today, Shanghai will undergo another round of COVID testing after a weekend of rising cases. Shanghai is under lockdown until tomorrow as officials rush to test all 25 million residents for COVID. Snapchat is making it easier to share YouTube videos instead of attaching a video as a link. Now you can hit the share button on a video, select Snapchat, and the video will appear in your camera as its own sticker. ABC 15 Desert Drive Time, sponsored by Accident Law Group. Quarter past the top of the hour. I want to give you eyes on the road in the East Valley this morning on the US 60. That first camera is near power, and you can see not a lot of folks out on the road. Things are looking pretty good at Gilbert Road as well. Few more cars entering the freeway there. And then even through Priest, it's pretty good. Just a little bit further, though, and you'll start to hit the slowdown this morning from the US 60. So if you are using Using the 60 this morning to get from the 202 to the 10 that view that we just saw 15 minutes these times courtesy of accident law group. If you are using the 202 to get from the 60 to the 10, that's a 20 minute ride coming down the 51 and the 17 this morning, both 10 to 15 minutes. Not bad at all. 25 minute commute. If you're coming from the far West Valley, the 303 punching through central Phoenix to the mini stack this morning. So actually not bad, especially for a Monday. If you're going across the north, Valley between the 51 and the 17. That's just about 10 minutes as well. And if you're scooping across the bottom half of the valley coming from the west end to the east on the 202 South Mountain, 20 minutes there and 15 minutes for our friends from Maricopa who are headed toward the 10 this morning. Now, are you going to need long sleeves? Are you going to be <laughs> peeling layers? Let's check in with Allison Rodriguez and that most accurate forecast. <laughs> yeah, layers are going to be a good idea, especially, you know, depending on where you are this morning, because you're going to want to bundle up if you're in Flagstaff waking up there this morning as our temperatures 
have dipped down into the 20s, also in the 20s in the Grand Canyon, 45 in Window Rock, 48 in Winslow. We're currently sitting in the 30s in Heber and Sholo, 52 in Sedona, 42 in Prescott, and we've got 60s right now in Bullhead City, Lake Havasu City, and Quartzsite as well. Clouds and radar here showing a few clouds coming over our state, mostly in the northern half, but we're going to see a few lingering clouds as well as we go in through this morning. But now those will start to break up and we're in for a mostly sunny to sunny day today. Here's a look at your hiking forecast. If you're going to be heading out here pretty soon, make sure to have that mobile app, that ABC 15 app, because we'll go with you on your hike and get all your headlines. Just pop those headphones in right and make sure you are staying hydrated. The temperatures not going to be anything bad for you. We're talking 67 by 8 a.m., 70 degrees by 9 o'clock. So it starts to feel a little bit warmer, but still really nice out there. Afternoon highs are going to be warmer than what we got to yesterday. That official high was 87 at Phoenix Sky Harbor. We'll see that in places in the East Valley like Mesa, Scottsdale, Tempe to Ahwatukee. A little bit warmer in places like Glendale, Peoria, Surprise, Goodyear and Buckeye in the West Valley. Keeping in mind that we should be topping out in the mid to low 80s for this time of April, but we all know that things do start to get a little bit warm, right? And we only have a couple more days to enjoy spring training today and tomorrow. That's it. So if you are going to be heading out today, uh, first pitch usually right around one o'clock. We're going to have those temperatures in the low 80s there. And as the games get going, uh, we are expecting those temperatures to climb into those daytime highs like you just saw with lots of sunshine too. So grab that SPF. Don't want those shoulders burnt for you uh, or those noses either as you head home later on. Futurecast here is going to show and that we've got this disturbance passing over us. That is what's going to bring us some breezes today as well as tomorrow. And then behind it, as it moves out of the way, we're tracking high pressure. And that is going to take our temperatures up. So here are those short sleeves that Noah is talking about. Today, our last day in the 80s, at least for the foreseeable future, as we have highs climbing into the 90s for the rest of your seven-day forecast. High 97 by Saturday. Thankfully, no triple digits in this forecast. But as we look into the high country and Flagstaff, we're going to see those temperatures climb there as well tomorrow close to 70 degrees we'll back down with those temperatures a little bit and then climb back up as we get into the end of the week and into the weekend as well can we call this pool weather uh yeah i think we can bite me over <laughs> okay well <laughs> i'll have to find a pool but okay we'll see what we can do um if you are thinking about a home improvement project hang on there have been so many delays our consumer reporter john matteris is sharing how to protect yourself so you don't waste your money okay Carolyn Nirenberg is at wit's end when it comes to getting a new working refrigerator. And they said, well, you can have the floor model or we can order you another and, and it'll probably be about a year before you get it. A year? A year. <laughs> so she reluctantly took the floor model and said the ice maker never worked since day one. We went to use the ice in the water mechanism and it doesn't work. It leaks all over the inside of the refrigerator. But even though it was under warranty, the repair company has tried four times to fix it, waiting weeks for some parts, and it still leaks. It all comes down from here. But it's not just kitchen appliances right now where things are out of stock or parts are hard to find or there's long delays. It seems no matter what type of home project you're doing right now, expect it to take a lot longer till you finally have it finished. I mean, we're seeing an increase in appliance cost as well as extended lead times. Home builder Ben Fry says fridges and dishwashers are not the worst. It can take up to a year to get windows and garage doors. So his advice to customers, try to order a standard size window or door. Ask about appliances that are in stock, not special order. And order months before you need something. Right when the customer signs a contract, we're ordering windows, garage doors, appliances. I mean, um, you know, bathroom fixtures, just everything we can that has extended lead times to make sure it comes in on time. Carolyn hopes to finally have a working fridge by summer. It's very frustrating. <laughs> you know, you get your heart set on remodeling, you get in the groove, and it's, like I said, it's just been kind of a nightmare after nightmare. And that way you don't waste your money. I'm John Matteris. Well, it sounds like a seal of a deal. Coming up at 625, how you can score free tickets to an Arizona Diamondbacks game. And the winners, the losers, oh, and the surprises ahead at 637. We're going to take a look at the longer than how long it took uh, to get to this year's biggest night. Plus, finding relief at the pump at 645. Should the government send you money to help fill up your gas tank? And to make sure your AC is working, uh-oh, 
Yeah, you better, <laughs> because you're gonna need it at 6.50. We're looking ahead to your weekend during the super seven day forecast. A new restaurant and sports bar just opened at Bell Bank Park in Mesa, the Goat, one of the biggest in the state, offering more than 100 televisions and 40 beers on tap. It's open Wednesdays through Sundays. So our sons losing their second game in a row. This was painful last night. They fell in Oklahoma City. Yeah, the team decided to rest Devin Booker, DeAndre Ayton, and Jay Crowder. I think a lot of us were just like, can we get them out there? <laughs> yeah, it's true. Those three starters are expected to be back on the court, though, tomorrow night as the Suns go for their franchise record 63rd win of the season. Tomorrow night you know, it should be a fun night over at the Footprint Center. The Suns are going to take on the Lakers. Besides being a franchise record, if the Suns win, they will likely knock Los Angeles out of the playoff. I know, usually. <laughs> so today and tomorrow, spring training games are happening across the valley. And then Thursday, okay, that's the big one. Yes. It's opening day. Yep, it's going to be Thursday evening. We're going to have complete coverage for you here on ABC 15 Mornings, of course. Our Diamondbacks will be hosting the San Diego Padres that night. First pitch set to happen at 640 Thursday. And to welcome fans when you buy a ticket to an opening week game, well, it will also get you a free ticket to a game in the future. You do have to buy your tickets through dbacks.com. Look at that. Look at the stadium looking all beautiful so this, this morning. morning right? Yeah, gorgeous live shot there. Next at 630 this summer, you can't drive during the monsoon if your wipers don't work. General Motors issuing a recall to fix hundreds of thousands of windshield wipers. And speaking of recalls, wow, a consumer alert. This is for all parents. Why the FDA is deciding to recall a few Disney hand sanitizers. Pandemic related border restrictions are coming to an end next month. And now leaders here in Arizona are weighing in.